Welcome aboard Star White. I hope you find these videos interesting. Thanks for watching. Star White did not have an anchor windlass when we acquired her. Her primary anchor was a 22 pound Bruce attached to 25 feet of 5 16 chain and 125 feet of half inch three strand rope. We felt this was a bit undersized. We replaced the undersized 22 pound Bruce with a 35 pound Delta. We replaced the original anchor road with 165 feet of 5 16 all chain road. Having an all chain road requires a much younger back than mine. A windlass was definitely going to be required. We decided to go with the Simpson Lawrence 555 Sea Tagger. It's a windlass that we're quite familiar with, having had it on previous boats and used it throughout the South Pacific. I prefer a manual windlass. There's no wiring involved. It's simply a matter of bolting it down, in this case, uh, bolting it to the bowsprit. I also like the fact that I can stand up on deck with my little lever and rock it back and forth as I bring the road in, taking in the uh, sunrise or sunset, depending on whether I'm uh, leaving or arriving at an anchorage. The bow design of a west sail with the bowsprit and bow platform fairly well dictates the choice of a horizontal style windlass, which was fine by me. I've always preferred the horizontal windlass because it's a self-contained unit. Everything is inside one case that just simply gets bolted down on deck or in the case of a west sail onto the bowsprit. Choosing a windlass was the easy part. Deciding on the best mounting location on the bowsprit was a bit of a challenge. The final location was chosen to minimize interference with the staysail bag and allow the chain to drop into the deepest, widest part of our anchor locker to avoid castling. Castling is when the chain piles up and then falls over on itself. This can lead to jamming the next time your chain is deployed. The Sea Tagger windlass is a two-speed windlass. This side over here, when you put the handle in, retrieves at a faster speed. This side over here at a slower speed, but with more power. Uh, I very seldom use the low-speed side, other than occasionally if the anchor is really deeply set. Usually, we'll just motor over the anchor to pull it out of the bottom. The brown board that you see is a cutout that fits over the top of the chain pipe to prevent any rainwater from getting down in there. It just simply slides back out of the way and it opens up the chain pipe. It's something that I fabricated out of a scrap piece of, uh, oh, I don't know, what is that, quarter inch plywood. It simply slides on around the chain link and it slides all the way forward to the stripper. It uh, relies just on tension to hold it there. It does a good job, it's worked well for us. As you can see, we fabricated a continuous length for the chain pipe. This is a stainless steel pipe that runs down through the deck. So we can try to eliminate as much water as possible from getting down into the chain locker itself. I keep the handle for the windlass down below here. I've got a string attached to it so that uh, if somehow it gets out of the way, it uh, isn't going to go anywhere. The numbers that you see on the back of the shoe here are reminders for me about the markings on the chain and how much chain we have out. 